Cheers, guys. Epix 911. Welcome to the Saturday, February 25th, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's start with Star Wars, specifically Star Wars Rogue One, which was a standalone Star Wars movie. It centered around pivotal events that would ultimately lead to the movie A New Hope, which was the first franchise movie, but not necessarily the first in chronological order. Now, as a huge sci-fi geek, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, love them all, plus more. One of the things I've always loved about Star Wars is the special effects. I think we were all just caught by the lightsabers, the way laser bursts were handled. It was just stuff we hadn't seen before. It was way ahead of its time. And not only did they help drive the industry standards up for special effects, they innovated new techniques. I mean, the wizards with at Lucas's industrial light magic, just absolutely stunning effects at times. They weren't always, however, necessarily complex. And that's where this story comes in and has to do with the director of Rogue One. His name is Gareth Edwards. Now, Gareth is known as a bit of a documentary style director. He's very hands-on and he likes to cream around the set during filming. Even if there's a stationary camera, he may not be stationary. And part of that is helping him visualize the scene by actually seeing it at different angles rather than through storyboards or his imagination. The problem is, as you can tell, that doesn't work well with special effects sequences, CGI, for example, space battles. Well, that was until his tech team had something to say about it. And what these guys basically did was take one of these and an iPad, so a Vive controller and an iPad, literally fix it on there with some programming wizardry, allow it to tie into their animated graphic sequences. So, for example, a space battle scene, like the one with the two Star Destroyers ramming into each other or the one ramming into the other. He was able to literally walk around the room with his iPad and Vive controller and see the action from all kinds of different perspectives. Comment on them, have it re-rendered, reprocessed, and be able to see that. Something that really hasn't been done, all using virtual reality. Now, that was news to me, and pretty damn cool news, because sure as hell I'm gonna watch the movie again and appreciate the fact, when I see those space sequences, that the VR, you know, we love using was very instrumental in the final product. So I thought that was really cool. Next up, the hard light VR suit that I talked about a week and a half ago. There's been an update. So I liked the technology at the time. It's the one that had the 16 haptic sensors that would allow for directional impacts or directional feedback. An arrow to the back, one of the haptic pads on your back gets triggered. So really good for that, but my concern at the time was who is going to use it. Without a large install base, devs might be hesitant to patch for it. You may be better off with one of the ones that generates off of music or explosions, right? Like the bass trigger type ones, which uh, Tom, one of the viewers, he uses that for Elite Dangerous and says it is really, really good to use. So uh, I'm probably gonna try that myself. But back to this suit, they started a Kickstarter. And my concern also with that was the more complex, the less likely to deliver. Not impossible by any means. And I sure as hell hope they deliver. Uh, it's more the concern that if they don't, because of the complexity, might see a lot of disappointed people. But with that said, they busted through the $80,000 mark. They've got 25 plus days to go. So at this point, I'm just going to wish them the best and hope for the best that they do deliver uh, to those backers. Next story, Mixcast, a mixed reality broadcast and presentation system. Now, this is a bit of a homegrown story because 
One of the companies is actually a Vancouver-based company, but it's also cool because it comes on the heels of me talking about mixed reality the other day. So there is uh, an application and it's called Mixcast VR, and it lets both developers and consumers create their own mixed reality content. Now, the company is called Blueprint Reality, and these guys, are, like I said, are from Vancouver, so a Canadian company. They had a game called Awaken VR Puzzle that was for the Vive VR headset. Personally, I haven't tried it. But Mixcast VR, instead of being a game, is basically a suite of tools to do exactly that, create mixed reality. So very cool. Probably one I'm going to have a look at. Uh, Cost-wise, you can get it subscription-based, $10 per month or $20 for a three-month subscription on the Steam store. Now, I've also included a link. If there are devs watching this or somebody who's interested in trying it out, go to the YouTube link that I've put down below and it will link you to the actual tutorial that you get when you purchase this subscription. And it looks pretty cool in terms of how it's set up. Not terribly complex, but lots of potential, immensely powerful potential. Next story, Steam VR tracking HDK is now available for anyone to buy. So we talked a couple of weeks ago about how they had lifted the $3,000 requirement for the course before you could get the kit. Well, now it's basically available for anyone. You don't have to be a dev. Now, the kit starts at $595 US. So if you're thinking, okay, you can use that to build your own new tracking solution for your Vive, the commercial one's gonna be substantially less. So probably not a good idea for that, but certainly if you're a dev, it could help with not only understanding some of the tracking, but maybe coming up with some innovative ways to actually use some of the new features and added benefits that you get from it. So that includes a bunch of stuff. You get uh, uh, a board, so the actual chip board. You get what's called Watchman Core Module, and that supplies all of the processing power. A breakout sensor board, a wireless dongle, four packs of cables, and a Honkin 2.4 gigahertz antenna with cable. So pretty much get all the stuff Check out the link and you'll see somebody actually putting the kit together in a loop. I think it's about an 18 second video, but it gives you an idea of what some of those components look like. So again, mostly probably of interest just to devs who plan on looking into that new tracking. Next story, ARM and SMI to showcase new mobile VR eye tracking demo at the upcoming Game Developers Conference. Now. Arm is a company you don't hear a hell of a lot from, but they've been around for a hell of a long time. Their history goes back. My first recollection of Arm was for a very ahead of its time computer that was out of the UK called the Acorn Archimedes. And Arm makes CPUs and it works different than the x86 and we don't need to get into the technical. Just... Trust me on this one, it's different. But it was also different in a good way. It was very fast if you programmed specifically for its feature set. So a game like Elite, for example, which on all the computers at the time was kind of slow and clunky, on this thing, ran like a dream. It was amazing. Well, Arm is still around in 2017 and they have teamed up with Sensor Motoric Instruments, i.e. SMI to basically showcase a host of mobile GPUs with, and this is the kicker, eye tracking and foveated rendering technologies in a made for VR demo. And they're gonna debut that demo, like I said, at the Game Developers Conference. I am really curious how this is going to look and I can't wait to get feedback from some of the authors that I follow on Road to VR, Upload, Venture Beat, really curious because they sound very powerful uh, even though it's mobile just to have that eye tracking in there and the 
hopefully the demo utilizes that. I imagine it would, considering they mention it specifically. So that'll be at the upcoming GDC. All right, guys, that is it for February the 25th news. Hopefully your weekends are going well, guys. You know what I'm getting back to, work stuff. As always, cheers.